AMD's big knobby should scare Nvidia because it just keeps looking better. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Wondershare and their Uniconverter one-stop video converter for any media file and memories. Uniconverter is a great tool because it allows you to do everything you need such as convert videos in their original quality fast with GPU acceleration which means less time waiting around. Edit videos in an easy to use video editor which has advanced features and will allow you to get professional looking clips in minutes. Record videos with its built-in high quality screen recorder that gives you multiple options for recording and compress your videos to the right size and quality for sharing your clips online. UniConverter has a nice clean interface and has been used by over 50 million customers with a 4.5 out of 5 star rating by over 500 reviews. And did I mention that it's easy to use? Because it is, it's so easy your grandma could use it. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click the link in the description below and give it a try. Now one thing I want to mention before we get into this video is that if you like these type of videos, be sure to hit that like button as it helps quite a bit. And if you're not subscribed already, be sure to do that as well. But in any case, let's get right into it. So a couple pieces of new information on AMD's Big Navi 6800 XT graphics card were leaked online by Red Gaming Tech and Patrick Schur over on Twitter, which by the way, as always, links to both of these sources will be in the description below so you can get everything they have to say on the matter. But in any case, the 6800 XT should be AMD's second fastest graphics card as it's heavily rumored that there's actually a 6900 XT that exists out there somewhere and it's being hidden from AIBs so that nobody really knows how fast AMD's fastest graphics card is going to be. But in any case, let's go ahead and start off with that first piece of information there, which comes from Red Gaming Tech, where Paul discusses some performance info on the 6800 XT versus the RTX 3080 in 10 different games at 4K and 1440p that was shared with him by one of his sources. So if we go ahead and we take a look here, according to Paul at 4K, the 6800 XT actually wins in five games at 4k ties in two games and loses in three games now of course this was done without any dlss it's the native 4k resolution so we don't really know how that's going to perform there but overall it looks like the 6800 xt is looking really fast but there's another thing we don't know and we don't know if it was an aib versus an aib model or if it was the nvidia founders edition versus an aib model of the rx 6800 xt because i would assume that if he's getting this information from an aib which i don't know but if he is, it's probably an AIB model type of card of the 6800 XT. So it might actually be performing a little bit better than the cards that they show off on the 28th, but we'll just have to wait and see. And moving on to the 1440p results here, here's what's get a little bit more interesting. And it's actually kind of what I was expecting. Here we can see that the 6800 XT versus the RTX 3080 at 1440p, it actually wins in eight of the games and only loses in two games this time. So we can see here that it seems like as the resolution decreases, AMD tends to do a little bit better than Nvidia. And the reason for this being would be this the difference in the architecture. So if you take a look at Turing, you can see that the FP32 cores and the integer cores were actually separate in the architecture, which allowed them to do FP32 and int at the exact same time. Whereas if you move over and you look at the Ampere architecture, you'll see that they actually have an FP32 plus an FP32 slash integer type of setup, which means that, you know, if any integer instructions come across the GPU, it can actually only use half the FP32 cores. And another thing is that the Ampere architecture architecture didn't exactly double everything. It it doubled the FP32 cores, but that doesn't mean that absolutely everything else in the GPU was doubled. Now, I'd have to take a closer look at the actual GPU architecture itself to tell you exactly what was and wasn't doubled. But if you take a look at things such as like the ROPS, you might see that, who knows, maybe they didn't double those. I, again, I'd have to take a closer look, but the Ampere architecture when compared to Turing, just to, you know, keep it short, doesn't scale very well at the lower resolutions where it actually does pretty dang well at 4K. And on the flip side, if you go ahead and you take a look at AMD's architecture with their RDNA 2 GPUs, you'll see that it actually is going to perform a little bit better at the lower resolutions. And I think this is a combination of potentially the Infinity Cache helping them out at lower resolutions. And on top of that, um, I think they actually might have a little bit of a benefit from getting slightly higher clock speeds because, you know, in the past, I believe AMD has come out and said that they were going to bring over the Ryzen team to help them create this RDNA 2 architecture. And, you know, I would assume that the Ryzen team, now this isn't confirmed, 
but I, I would assume, and I've said this before, that the Ryzen team has helped them boost the clocks up when it's they have an opportunity to do so. So, for example, if you're playing at 4K with uh, ray tracing on, the GPU is going to be at its lowest clock speed. Whereas if the GPU is not being fully utilized, you're playing at 1080p, there's no ray tracing going on whatsoever. It might try and boost up the voltage and try and get that clock speed as high as humanly possible so that it can actually get the highest performance even at lower resolutions. So, you know, when you take that into account, plus the Ampere architecture not being quite as good at the lower resolutions, well, you're going to probably look at a GPU that's going to, you know, slap NVIDIA all over the place when you look at 1080p and potentially even 1440p. And it might even do it at a lower price, which I hope it does, because if they're able to undercut NVIDIA by, say, $50, $100, and on average at 1440p, it is actually faster, well, you know what? That's actually a pretty good deal. And the final piece of information comes from Patrick Schur over on Twitter, who has leaked several things in the past, and he had this to say about the Navi 21 XT or the 6800 XT Asus Strix Edition in relation to its clock speed. So he stated that apparently he had information on three different systems with their clock speeds running at up to 290 watts for the TGP, which by the way, the TGP is the total graphics power, which is, I believe is the GPU plus the GDDR6 power combined. It's not the total board power, which AMD tends to give you the total board power so expect that to be a little bit higher but in any case in the three different systems for their clock speeds he said that the first one had had an average of about 2300 megahertz a medium of about nearly 2400 megahertz and a max of over 2550 megahertz the second system had an average of nearly 2300 megahertz once again a median of 2300 megahertz and a max of around 2400 megahertz and the final system had an average of about 2100 megahertz a median of 2300 megahertz and a max of about 2500 megahertz so why is this interesting and why are we even talking talking about this. So this is interesting to me because it shows that the AIB partner model cards are going to be able to boost really, really high, in some cases potentially over 2.5 gigahertz. And this isn't the first post that I've seen suggesting that Big Navi or the RDNA 2 architecture can actually hit over 2.5 gigahertz, which is actually pretty incredible because, you know, we knew it was going to clock pretty high when you take a look at the PS5 hitting 2.23 gigahertz in a very power limited type of situation where it's, you know, sharing power with the CPU as well and they don't have a whole lot of power power to draw from. But, you know, moving over to the desktop, I expected it to kind of max out somewhere between 2.3 to 2.4 gigahertz max. So seeing that this card is capable of hitting over potentially 2.5 gigahertz when you give it enough juice is really interesting. And I think it shows that this card is going to be hopefully a little bit more overclockable than you, when compared to, you know, NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, because I was very, very disappointed to see that those cards had pretty much been tapped out out of the box. The power levels are extremely high. Now, of course, the power level on these AMD cards could end up being pretty high as well, but we don't 100% know for sure yet. I know that Igor from Igor's lab was saying that apparently the 6800 XT might drop to, I think he said, 320 watts. Don't quote me on that, but you know, I'd be you know a little bit disappointed if that was the case, but we don't know for sure yet. Uh, I think AMD might end up drawing a little bit less power, and I think there's going to be a little bit more overclocking headroom because when you look at leaks like this, you see, you know, it's boosting up to 2.5 plus gigahertz, whereas I think the models that come out straight from AMD are going to be boosting up to like 2.3, 2.4 gigahertz max. So, yeah, I think there's going to be a little bit of extra overclocking headroom there, but we're going to have to wait until the 28th to see for sure just how fast these things go. But you know what? If they can even touch like 2.6 gigahertz just with their big toe, you know what? That's going to be pretty satisfying. Also, one more thing I want to mention is that I will be live streaming the event on the 28th. So if you're not subscribed, once again, make sure you are as it's going to be just a whole lot of fun. But in any case, that's just what I think. What do you think about these 6800 XT leaks? Do you think that it's going to beat NVIDIA or do you think that they're going to fall short? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, NVIDIA and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.